A couple weeks ago, I bought this MacBook for just $50. Now it showed up in pretty terrible condition with a base 128 gigabyte SSD and it was running OS 10 Mavericks. But with just $50 in parts, we managed to clean this thing up, get it nice and fresh, install a much more recent operating system and quadruple its storage from 128 to 512 gigabytes. But at the end of that video, I proposed another test for this device. And that is that I should take up the challenge of using this as my only MacBook for an entire week. Before we can get started using this thing, we're gonna have to get it updated because this MacBook is running the latest version of macOS that it supports, which is Big Sur. And then we're gonna get this thing all set up and I'm gonna find out just how usable this thing is. How has the battery held up? Can I use Photoshop to make thumbnails for videos? Is it gonna be painfully slow for watching YouTube? All of that is to come, but first, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite, the complete device and identity protection package that works across PC, Mac, iOS, Android, and tablets. With Premium Security Suite, you can expect maximum security, an included secure VPN for public Wi-Fi, ID security through dark web monitoring, a simple and secure password manager, and a personal help desk for all things technical all work together to keep you protected. You can rest easy knowing that Trend Micro is monitoring for threats, scanning for identity-related data breaches, and they've got your back with up to $1 million identity fraud insurance to cover any out-of-pocket costs if you become a victim of identity theft. With all these features, you can form a comprehensive bubble around your systems, keeping you in control of your data and safe from threats. Plus, with VPN Proxy One Pro, you can bring that shield to any public Wi Fi network and secure up to 10 devices. So, to learn more about Trend Micro's premium security suite, check out the link in the description below and use code LUKE10 to save 10%. Big thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. So, if you don't remember, this is a base model. 2013 Retina MacBook Pro. I called it the poverty spec because this is the only Retina MacBook Pro to ever be produced with four gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, we're going into this $50 MacBook Pro usability challenge with the worst possible Retina MacBook Pro that money can buy. But hey, you know what? I'm putting my money where my mouth is because we all complain that Apple still puts eight gigabytes in their thousand dollar laptops. So I'm gonna see if I can get by on half of that. But first things first, we gotta get this computer upgraded because thanks to a tool called Open Core Legacy Patcher, we can actually install the latest version of Mac OS on this 11 year old machine, which is pretty impressive. And you can install it on things a lot older than this. So hopefully it should be a pretty good experience. Now the process for using Open Core Legacy Patcher is super simple. Just head over to the website, which I've linked down below and download the app. Then we're gonna go ahead and open it and you'll find a few options. We're gonna start with creating a macOS installer. The first thing we're gonna do is download a macOS installer because Open Core makes it super easy to download whatever version of macOS you want. Once that's done, we're gonna extract the installer and it'll automatically prompt whether you'd like to create an install disk. So we'll grab a flash drive and create an installer for macOS Sonoma. At this point, it'll prompt you to install Open Core to the disk. So we're gonna install that on both the flash drive and the SSD, restart to apply, and now we can switch over to the EFI boot partition, install macOS Sonoma. For some reason, mine showed up really, really tiny. Not sure why, but it doesn't matter because we can click install Sonoma and we're good to go. We're off to the races. It is genuinely impressive that you can run the latest version of macOS on an 11 year old machine. So I spent the next couple of hours just kind of using the machine completely as normal. All right, so it's now been 24 hours with this MacBook Pro. Yesterday, I gave it a good battery run where I started at 100 and I, I ran it until I got the low battery warning. And as you can see, that was about two hours. So yeah, this battery is 11 years old. It has 400 something cycles. The condition report shows that it's normal. However, because this system is so weak, anything that you're doing on it is really pushing it. You're constantly using up all of the RAM. You're constantly using up the whole CPU. But what about the actual experience? What is it like to use? You get the experience 
of an Apple ecosystem, but it's just a little bit slow. I mean, look, just opening the settings app, look how long that takes. Opening up the Apple News app, oh my gosh, this is taking forever. And it's not a Wi-Fi issue. Like the slowness that you're experiencing is purely because this system doesn't have enough resources. So you pull up two tabs in Safari, not even Chrome, this is Safari, and you're using 75% of the RAM. Four gigabytes is just tough. But anyway, I'm gonna stick with it because I'm committed to this challenge. And even if I have to really test my patience, I wanna give this MacBook Pro a fair shot. And look, I appreciate that I'm asking a lot of a system that's really, really out of date. I mean, I fired up Cinebench 2024 and it scored 82. Yeah, I mean, compare that to an M1 MacBook Pro, right? Like this thing is a dual core fourth gen i5. It is absolutely anemic. But do you know what? It still kind of works. All right, so day two so far has been fairly uneventful, but I did just have a really random moment about an hour ago. I was at like 65% battery and then boom, I turned around, looked back, it was gone, completely dead. So I plugged it back in, turned it back on and it said the battery was completely dead. And then like two minutes after that, it was back at 60%. So the battery in this thing definitely is not the healthiest, even though it does appear to work generally. I mean, just randomly dying is probably not a good thing. But weirdly, this seemed to be a turning point for the MacBook as the next day I brought it to a coffee shop. I was working on scripts for an upcoming video. I was downloading attachments and working on briefs for brand integrations and all for about two hours, which is the amount of time it took me to kill the battery completely two days prior. But this time it worked a lot better like, I don't really understand this, but for some reason the MacBook is improving. See, I don't know exactly what happened, but the battery life is like fine now. I don't know, maybe this computer wasn't used for a while, the battery was a little rusty or something, but it seems to be a lot better. That two hour battery life that I experienced on the first day, I mean, it's not fantastic, probably four hours tops, but hey, I'll take it. The one thing that just, keep sticking with me that's very weird for me is seeing a Retina MacBook Pro that is slow. I mean, I know this thing is 11 years old and it's running a dual core processor and four gigs of RAM, but in my mind, Retina MacBook Pros are like modern and fast and they run on flash architecture. So they are always fast in my mind. So it's very weird and frankly frustrating when this thing is just so darn slow. I had to do a whole bunch of work today. So I was working on a thumbnail for a video, Photoshop being a, a good way to test if this computer could be usable. And I will say the display, fantastic. For a hundred bucks, you're not gonna do any better than this screen wise, but my goodness, was it slow? I had a bunch of stuff open, granted. I'm like downloading fonts, I'm using the internet, I've got Photoshop open, and this poor computer was just like, please let it end. I just don't wanna be around anymore. But even though it's slow, I'm, I'm still taking advantage of all of the stuff that I love about the Apple ecosystem. I'm using iCloud Keychain for my passwords. I'm airdropping pictures from my other computer. I'm getting SMS verification codes for login stuff forwarded to here and auto-filling that online. Though the one thing that's kind of breaking the illusion a little bit is the whole port situation. I'm loving the HDMI and SD card situation. Feels right at home coming from Apple Silicon MacBook Pros. But the lack of USB-C I'm finding to be very, very difficult. And because we're using MagSafe 2, it means I have to carry around a different charger, which I'm not used to doing. Phone, AirPods, MacBook, camera, everything is on USB-C, but now I have to carry MagSafe 2 for this guy. It's almost as if Apple was right about USB-C being the future. Another thing that I'm missing quite a lot, the speakers. That's another thing, for the past nine years, Apple speakers have been getting really, really good. This thing, honestly, sounds like garbage. And we can get to know this device a little bit better. why the Sharp Mobileon tripod is so fascinating is that it has a number of features that didn't become popular in one. Yeah, not great. But hey, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm comparing my $100 MacBook to a $2,000 MacBook. So I'm gonna hold my tongue. We're gonna wait until the end of my week-long experiment to see whether I can comfortably recommend something like this. No, I can't. 
So while it's incredible that you can get a machine like this for so little money, there is a reason why this was the absolute base model poverty spec MacBook Pro. And that is because four gigabytes is just, it's just not usable anymore. I really think it's worth a couple extra bucks to just get something with eight gigs of RAM. And you really don't have to spend very much money to do that. So we'll start with a simple search, MacBook Pro filtering for 13 inch display size. And if you wanna get a Retina one, I recommend going down to processor. We're gonna click on Core i5 fourth and fifth gen, and we'll do Core i7 fourth and fifth gen as well. So these are gonna be Retina pre touch bar machines as you can see. And you know what, while we're at it, let's do eight and 16 gigabytes of RAM because that's kind of the whole point. And we've got a bunch of options at like 130 to $150 to buy 2015 Retina MacBook Pros. These things are a lot more usable. They have the force touch trackpad. They can natively support up to Mac OS Monterey. And they have slightly newer core i5 and i7s that aren't that much more powerful, but they are noticeably better, and really most of that just comes down to the RAM. I mean, take a look at how much more usable it is just to open applications. You can really see the difference. So for 50 bucks, this is a pretty cool experiment, right? If I had left the original SSD in it, it would have been 50 bucks out the door, working MacBook with a Retina display. And honestly, if you just want to get like a media player to give to your kids when you're going on a trip, you can't go wrong with that. But for actually using as a computer, you're probably gonna want a little bit more. And fortunately, the prices for used MacBooks right now are so good that that's not that hard to do. So I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this experiment. What machine are you using? I know a lot of you guys are rocking some really cool older upgraded machines. Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one.